Welcome to The Photographer Show, where we talk to you, the everyday photographers in the photo focus community, about your love of photography and dig into some of the fun, nerdy stuff we all love about the art and craft of photography. My name is Scott wine Gibowitz, and I'm joined today by my co-host, Lori Novak. Hey, Lori. Hello. How are you? <laughs> Good. Um, so... Uh, the Photographer Show is presented by Tamron. Be sure to check out instant savings on select Tamron lenses for your DSLR or mirrorless camera. Go to tamron-usa.com. And today, Lori and I are talking to Sandra Jordan. Sandra, welcome to The Photographer Show. Can you please tell us a little bit about yourself? Hi, um, I'm Sandra. I'm a photographer based in London, UK. Um, I started photography probably about 15 years ago. I used to work in the film industry in a really, really sort of stressful job. And um, I wanted to go back to see some friends in Turkey where I used to live, but I don't fly, which is a tad tricky for a travel photographer. <laughs> and uh, my PA at the time said, just why don't you go by train? And I'd never even thought about it. And so I started this mm. mammoth like three month train journey. And I thought, well, I might as well take a camera with me. And then that sort of like, it went from there. And then I've been uh, fairly photographically obsessed ever since. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, yeah, yeah um, I think in the last episode, I brought up the whole traveling around Europe through a train is conven you know, it's convenience. Um, yeah. And it really is like, I mean, I haven't been there myself, haven't experienced it firsthand, but like you read about it, you see it. Um, so whether you whether you're somebody who's afraid of airplanes or whatever other reasons can't go on an airplane the fact that you do travel by train offers a pretty unique experience uh to travel photography so i'm sure there's some cool um some cool things you've seen or even some photo projects that you can do on the train while you're you know commuting uh between you know place to place um so it's got to be an yeah. interesting thing Absolutely. And it gives you the opportunity to go to more places in one trip. Right. So if you, if, as long as you've got the time, um, and I've been right. all over the place, I've been down to, well, I went down to Turkey originally. Um, I went, I took a train to Russia uh, a couple of years ago and I took seven trains to the Arctic. So I was not wow. going to be beaten. I did not realize that. Flight. I didn't yeah. realize that you didn't fly there. No, oh, oh, my I, I goodness. did the time I went to Svalbard because that's oh, okay. the only option. But when yeah. I go to the Arctic Norway, like the mainland, no, I go by train and boat. So it's a really fabulous experience, especially with the boat, because a lot of my work actually comes from one of the boat trips that I took to get up to the islands. That's awesome. So, yeah, it's a fantastic it's way to travel. Um, you know, if, if you ever have a chance to go to, again, I haven't been to Alaska either, but if you ever have a chance to go to Alaska, your only way around Alaska for the most part is a boat or airplane. Um, yeah. Wait, and there's I certain, went... there's certain, yeah, there's, there's certain um, places where the boats can't even go that you have to do an airplane. Right. Right. I went on a trip. That was one of my mom's bucket lists is to do mm. the cruise. And I'm not a cruise person. Like it was one of the huge, you know, cattle shifts with so many people. And it's just, it's not to me personally, it's not an enjoyable experience because you're like, you're, it is, it's like being herded, you know? And if you get off the mm. ship, you got you you only have a certain time limit to do it. And even one of the photo expeditions I went on without, without my mom, it was like, you, I'm like, I just want to set my tripod up here and catch this waterfall for like, Oh no, we got to go. You know, yeah. I was like, okay. <laughs> whatever. So it's, <laughs> but like you said, there's, there's places in Alaska you can't get to. Otherwise you won't yeah. see those things. I would love to drive around Alaska, but you still would, you would miss out on the stuff that you can only right. see from a ship, you know? So yeah. that was, it was, you know, it was great scenery. I would just prefer a smaller, smaller ship maybe. <laughs> and more time. <laughs> and more time. Yes. More time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So um, the, the, we always start with the first question, uh, this, this first question for everybody. Uh, what was your first camera? It was a Canon, although I have to admit, I can't remember exactly the model. It was a film <laughs> camera and I'm going to say it was about 33 years ago. So I was 17, uh, oh, 35 years ago. Um, and I saw an advert in the local newspaper 
and it was 50 pounds which is about i don't know about 75 80 dollars i think for a camera and three lenses and i thought that was a real sort of steal and so that was my first camera and i stayed with that actually for quite a long time but just dabbling around a bit as a teenager you know life sort of gets in the way after that and and it sort of got stuck in the cupboard for a while but it was <laughs> it was brilliant at the time and it was a brilliant camera just to to learn on and practice and, and what are you using these days? I'm using a Canon still. <laughs> I've got a Canon. I think at the time when I, when I, even though I wasn't doing a lot of photography, sort of like in my 20s and, and early 30s, when I decided to do that trip, I still had that Canon camera and I still had the, and the lenses. And I'm not the most technical equipment person. And I just thought, well, I'll, I'll get a Canon digital and then I'll, because I've got those Canon lenses. And as it transpired that they didn't really work with it. And so I ended up having to buy a whole new kit. So, <laughs> but at the time I thought I was, you know, saving money, but it's, it's done well. So I've got a couple of Canons um, and then I've got a, a little Sony compact, but I have to say, I don't get the same experience when I use a, a it, it's a great camera. It's an RX100, R, RX mm -hmm. I think. And it takes great photos, but it's just, I don't know, I think I need something bulkier. I need something bigger. <laughs> My back doesn't love me for it, but I just need something extra to hold, I think. Yeah, yeah, no, I, 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 totally, I totally feel that. You know, I, I, I've always debated going to getting one of those compacts again. And then I think like, well, you know what? You know what? I, I've got my phone if I want something compact and don't want to carry a camera around. Um, and I actually went with the iPhone 12 Pro Max for the specific reason of it's a bigger sensor, you get the better lenses, um, and otherwise it's like give me give me a camera that I can actually feel. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. So, um, so uh, earlier you mentioned that um, you don't go on planes; you travel by um, by train. Yes. And. So that's an obvious obstacle um, that you've had to, uh, you know, evaluate and figure out how to get past. But I wonder what other obstacles, um, and maybe maybe you don't want to talk about others. Maybe you want to, you know, uh, go deeper into that if you want, whatever. But what kind of obstacles have you had to overcome in your photography? Do you know what confidence has been a really big one, mm. sort of thing? I think, you know, as artists it's really difficult because you put yourself out there you're showing work that's really personal to yourself and because I'm not I would absolutely put my hands up I am not the most technical photographer I know the buttons on the camera that I need to know to take the the photos that I take but there are a whole host of things on that camera that I've never even looked at and I don't know and one day I said to myself that I will learn them but I think it's just sort of like having the confidence to carry on shooting what I love in the hope that other people will enjoy it too. I think probably that's, and, and that's taken a long time actually to, to develop over the years. I've probably been photographing, I'd say for about 12 years now, and it's probably only the last five years that I feel like I'm on the right track and that I just have to trust that it's, I'm doing the right thing. I think I look at photography or really anything in general um, as something that if you are, if you are not having some sort of um, some sort of self-doubt or some sort of confidence questioning going on in your head, then that's actually a bigger problem. If you think that you're absolutely perfect, um, <laughs> that's a bigger problem. It might, like, I, I do, um, you know, I take freelance photography clients whenever and every single time before I start that session, I'm thinking, are they going to like the photos? Am I going to get it right? Am I going to nail it? And I've never had a problem, but it's still, it's like, it's, it, it's, it's up there, right? You, you have to, you have to, it's just, it's human nature. Um, so I think, I think um, that's a really good one to always be working towards. It's something that never ends. No, yeah, it, never, I, I, it never ever goes away. I still get it now. Like I'll send a print off to a client and then I'll see an, an email pop in my inbox and my immediate thought is, oh God, no, what's gone wrong? <laughs> And then yeah. you open it up and they're saying, oh my God, it's lovely. It's so amazing. It's much better than I thought on the computer. And then you think, oh, you don't need to worry. And, and time and time again, like you, you say, Scott, I haven't actually had, you know, touch wood, anything go wrong, but it's still, yeah. I don't know. It's just inbuilt. It's like my natural default 
setting. My, yeah, my, so lately I've been doing a lot of proposal photography sessions. So like the, you know, one person will want to propose to their spouse in secret and I'm playing the role of spy and hiding out somewhere, um, uh, sometimes quite literally in the bushes. And, and so that type of photo session, you can't bring a light. Right, you've got to you've got to be sneaky. You've got to have a long lens, and you have to stay quiet. Um, depending on where I am, I'm putting my camera into silent mode, so I literally can't even hear the shutter firing. And while I'm doing this, I'm you know while I, afterwards I do a sh very short engagement session. I'm thinking I should have brought my lights because are they going to like it if they don't pop as much if it's just natural light? And in the end, it's fine. They love it. It's it's. It's more their about the big moment. day. Yeah, it's more yeah. about that moment. Yeah. So it, you know, um, I think at the same time as as confidence comes into question, it's also don't overthink things mm -hmm. as well. Um, is a is a big thing. So, um, speaking of uh, hard things to learn, <laughs> what was the hardest thing that you've had to learn in your photography journey so far? Oh my goodness! Um, not to take as many photos. I think. To di digitally, mm. when you when you swap over to digital, there's just that there's just such an opportunity to snap and snap and snap away. And when I first started, I was coming back with thousands of images off trips, and I'm not really a person that spends much time post processing. So I think that was my biggest hurdle. And also, at the start, it was just to slow down. You don't have to photograph everything, and just to actually take some time to look at a scene first before you've taken like 30 images that really don't sort of like resonate well. I guess that's probably it. That's a really good point. And I think, especially when you're traveling, because you get to a new place and you're like, oh, look at that and look at that and look at that. And you don't know where to look, right? Because you're you're just like kind of overwhelmed with everything and you want to take photos of all of it. Mm -hmm. But it but you do so much better and you create better images if you stop, put the camera away when you first get to a spot and walk around and take it in, like you said, you know, the sights, the sounds, the smells, like the, what are the cafes and the people sitting outside and, and all of that can can then you can then you can wander around with your camera and like take the time to mm -hmm. find the little scenes that are in inside this whole big you know picture that you have in your head of all this stuff um and i think we all get caught up in that you know we're so excited to be somewhere different and and you just you know start just like you said you just start snapping away but then you get home and you're like eh, you know <laughs> they're just they're they're vacation photos you know which is yeah. fine too. I mean, it's nice to have those as a memory, you know, of what your trip was. But if you're trying to create artwork and create images, it's just very helpful if people if you take the time to not not look through your viewfinder the whole entire time. Absolutely. Yeah, slowing down is so important, so important, and you can definitely learn a lot more about yourself by yeah. by slowing down, you know. Sim uh, simple, simple thing is, you know, try putting your camera in manual focus instead of autofocus. Now you have no choice but to slow down right, or right. take it off of continuous and only do it on single so that you have to consciously yeah. move that finger. <laughs> um, so, right. Go, uh, go into a square or wherever you're at and, and pretend you have film in your camera and you only have mm -hmm. 12 or 24 or 36 yep. shots for that day yep. or for that, you know, give yourself an hour or two with just that many yeah. shots for the to cover the area. You know, that's always a fun challenge. Yeah. Um, and, and actually, so, so I think we should, um, I think that we should make that a, our first photographer show challenge is um, the day that this airs on photofocus.com. Yeah. We ask everybody who watches this to photograph a roll of 36 frames. Now it could be film if you want or digital um, and uh, share in the photofocus community. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm up for that. I love that challenge too. I still yeah, do it myself, so, you know, I still do mm -hmm. because you get caught up in doing what you always do and doing an exercise like that makes you stop and think about what it is you are doing all the time that maybe yeah. you shouldn't be, yep. you know? Right. Um, so, so Sandra, you've got a very diverse portfolio of work um, and we're going to be looking, I actually picked five of your photos to, uh, to go over, uh, which is a new world record for the, for the <laughs> photography show. Um, <laughs> and um, so right now, uh, I've so I've dabbled in some architecture work, but the two of you have 
a lot more of building photos in your portfolios than I do. Um, and I'm wondering, uh, what do you think about, what goes through your mind when you are looking at buildings to photograph them? Um, and the, one of the ones we're gonna look at today is a very different take on architecture photography. Um, so, which is what made me think about this question. So I, I'm wondering what goes through your mind when you're looking at buildings. Well, I'm, I'm intrigued to work, wonder what that photo is that you picked. <laughs> but, um, I think for me, it's actually with all my photography is that I work really on gut reaction. So I will walk around and spot a building and all, automatically fall in love with it and take it. But there's no in between for me. I either really love it or it's I'm just not interested. So it, there's not really much more thought process through it than that, apart from it has to be clear of any ground debris. No street, no cars, no people. Trees are a nightmare. I mean, they're lovely trees, obviously, for the environment <laughs> and climate and stuff. But, you know, they're especially when they're really tall, like in Berlin, they've got loads of trees around, which is amazing, but I don't want them in my imagery. So I think it really is just for me, a gut reaction. I fall in love with something instantly. And when people see your portfolio of the images, they're going to understand your, your um, aversion to trees in the shot or other things in the shot. They'll understand when they see what your, um, um, I can't think of the word, what they look like and how, how you present them. So they'll, that makes more sense knowing your work um, because it's hard to get um, that sort of like you must have to really work for some of those images to not get things in there especially like you said you don't spend a lot of time post-processing so you're not pulling images into photoshop and removing trees or things only because i don't know how to right i get it i understand <laughs> <laughs> i totally a, I don't understand know to. you know <laughs> B, I don't have the patience. so yeah. apart from that <laughs> I've seen images that I uh, like buildings that I absolutely love and I just can't get an angle where I can take things out and I'm mm. not really prepared to take it and then do a lot of work and post because that's not my experience. So there are buildings that I've seen that I just have to walk away from. Um, and it's, you know, it's, it's those buildings that's now, a, you know, that's been going on for five years. So I, I have seen a lot of buildings. I've been to a lot of cities sort of thing. And there's, you know, I, there are many more that I weren't, you know, that I wasn't able to photograph. Um, and you just have to, to walk on and then hope that you get something better around the corner. And invariably you do because right. they're an amazing amount of. There really is. It's it, oh, yeah. worldwide. There's so many places on my list, you know, like you have to go to this town because of the architecture is amazing there and it's amazing here and there. And, you know, it's, it's just uh, kind of a never ending thing. Yep. <laughs> um, so, so I mentioned that your photography covers a lot of different genres, um, many of which we'll be looking at today, actually. Um, and I'm wondering of all the work you do, which is your favorite? Oh, wow. That's a really difficult question. Um... <laughs> it's, I'm sure it's hard with, with how, how diverse your 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 work is yeah i think i think i link all my work together with like an underlying thing of the individuality even like if it's a lone tree or if it's a single building or stuff like that um it's a, one of my i suppose i suppose one of the series that i love is the mandalia which is the floral photography but i think that's because it has connotations linked to my father when he was ill. And so I have like a personal connection with that. Um, do you know what? It's really difficult to say because I actually love quite a lot of my work. <laughs> I'm not sure if I should say that, but I would say if I, I'm really into the architecture at the moment and I really love the glacial study, all the icebergs and stuff, because mainly it's not just something that you see every day. Mm -hmm. And again, that's probably because of the experience that I had with it. So a lot of my work and my favorite work is linked to the experiences I had at the time. Mm -hmm. So that time I was, sure. you know, like Laurie has done for sailing around Svalbard on a ship. And, you know, it's a, it was a once chance for me to, to do that and see that. So I would say probably, yeah, probably that one. Um, and then there's another one that I'm working on at the moment around grief, the heart sauna's one. And again, I really love that with all the fog and the mist and stuff like that. So it's quite difficult to pick just one out. 
That's we're good. Gonna, we're going to be looking. Actually, the first photo we're going to be looking at involves some some mist. Let's 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 go right into this. Let me know when you see your photo up on the screen. Ah. <laughs> okay, so that's um in Italy. That's that's more my travel work, I would say, than my sort of fine artwork. Um, and I took that. Oh, I mean, it was amazing in Italy, in Tuscany. You know, the sun sun came out, and it, the, it, a certain, I guess it was dependent on the weather that um, you get that lifting fog rising up from the hills and stuff. Um, and it was just, yeah, I mean, that's very little processing there. That's basically what I saw. It's amazing. Yeah, that I was so, I, one of the things I was gonna ask was, but I, I, I realized this right away when Lori said that you don't do much, um, much editing, is uh, I was gonna ask if the, the sun tint was artificial or if that was the time, you know, that's what it was. If you added any of the fog, like, but it seems like it, you, you got what you saw. And I think that's a fantastic, what a, what a cool view to, to be able to witness with your own eyes, first of all, yeah. but then also capture with your camera. Um, yeah, definitely no both. fog added or anything. That was all the mist just at that time. Um, and there are other ones in that series that sort of like, the, because the hills are really undulate and you just get a mixture of little hills and then fog and then hill. I mean, it was it was a question of being in the right place at the right time, for sure. Right, right. Um, the only time I've, I've witnessed something like this in person was when I went to the Palouse region of, uh, of Washington and it has a very similar view. Right. <clears throat> the rolling hills that they, co that is compared to the rolling hills in Italy um, and uh, sunsets and sunrises, you get these, these funky colors coming over the hills and, and whatnot. And um, the only difference is instead of like, uh, like a farmhouse and nice trees, you get um, what's it called? Uh, wind, like windmills for, for power. Yeah. The big windmills. <laughs> yeah. The, the big, yeah. huge ones, not, not the yeah. quaint looking, you know, old farm windmills. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The really, really large ones. Um, all right. Cool. Cool. Okay. So, um, I mentioned architecture before. Uh, so this is not your, I, I'm gonna say your, your normal architectural photo, of course, but this is the, the, this is what I would personally do if I came across a scene like this. I, I would do this exact same photo, um, cause this, this is more my style of, of architecture. The, and and uh, so that's what, that's what piqued my interest. The, the very, um, minimal sky you get the little bit of of stuff going on in the and you know in the in the pavement and then you get the unique roofs uh of each of each house and it's just so i i love this photo um so yeah if you can share a little bit about this please so this is from um a series that i did called out of season and i basically went to uk coastal resorts in the winter so like in the summer in the UK, they're really crowded and I wanted to go, you know, when there was no one around. And of course, in the winter, the weather lends itself much more to long exposures. So I had my Lee 10 stop filter um, and I wanted a, a lot of my work kind of cuts out all the clutter. It is quite minimalist um, and that's what long exposures are brilliant for. And I just yep. kind of happened to come across this and I wanted to cut out again any street clutter in front of in front of the wall, apart from a little bit of pavement, maybe to give it some context. And then you just, the, the sky was brilliant. It was perfectly gray, but it had different, it had different gradations in the sky. So a lot of the time we have gray sky here, but it's very flat. And so you're not gonna get any different texture or any different gradation. So this was sort of perfect. It had, and I, I have, will have enhanced that a little bit in post. I will have done a bit of dodging and burning in the sky. Um, I just love the shape. I just love the sort of like the repetition yeah. of the shapes and the fact that they're sort of just like peeking out <laughs> not the whole thing. So you can't, you know, it, you're left your imagination of what lies below it. Yeah. What yeah. I, what I really love about what you do and this, like this and the last one is you're very deliberate about your images. Mm -hmm. You're not just, even the travel image. I mean, that that's, de it's deliberate what you're doing or like this, you said you went deliberately, you went in the winter to these seaside towns because you knew there wouldn't be as many people. And you had an idea in your head that you wanted to, you know, photograph. Um, I think 
people don't always have that in their head when they go or they go and just don't have any kind of plan. You know, I'm guilty of this. I just go and shoot, you know, but you're very deliberate about what your series are and, and what you want to accomplish, which I, which shows in everything that you post and everything that's on your, in your portfolio portfolio. Oh, thank you. I think, I think for me, because I like, I mean, like a lot of us, my mind just constantly just whirring (laughs) round and round and round. And photography is the only thing that distracts me from that. And so, and that's, so I do purposely seek out places that I hope will, will the end viewer will have the same feeling when they see the image as to why I take photographs or why I use the act Mm -hmm. of photography, just to focus, to block out, to be able to breathe a little bit and just you know, get rid of that sort of mental clutter, which invariably means that most of my imagery doesn't have a lot of clutter in. Mm. Um, you, you mentioned about uh, very having sometimes or many times very gray, flat skies, um, but you're using a 10 stop filter. Have you ever thought about adding a graduated neutral density, even a two or three stop filter um, on top of it to in camera add that gradation where otherwise you have to do it in post? Um, I do actually use, I do actually use uh, graduated filters as well on top. Um, And so mainly the part in post will be when it's sort of like further down. So like the clouds there that are slightly further down near in the buildings because I've got hard edge grads. So it's, I, I don't sort of like put it too far down into the image. So those bits, I will maybe do a bit of dodging and burning. Anything that I can do in camera to stop me having to do anything in post is a win <laughs> right. for me. Yep, yep, I agree. <laughs> um, so this next photo caught my attention. Uh, besides from it being another sort of minimal look, uh, the leading line is absolutely stunning because not only is it a leading line, but you've got additional geometry going on go, going on here you have uh, you know di- additional shapes and lines and textures and and all these different things uh and so that's what caught my attention um so if you can share a little bit about uh this one please so the other thing that i do a lot in my work is sort of like the graphic nature the shape the line the form which is why a lot of it is either muted in color or black and white because in black and white when you strip the color away that is all you're left with line texture right. shape stuff like that and again it's the same with the part this it's part of the same series so it's still the sort of like the long exposures the lot of space in the sky i didn't want the pier to take up too too much of the image even though it is actually the the focal point of the image it's the leading subject there and i just, i suppose i just love the curve of it that also matches with the straight lines and then you have the curve on the wire work it's just sort of like a whole mixture of lines and curves and shapes and yeah, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, this one. This one caught my attention um, uh, pretty pretty fast when I was browsing through your portfolio of work, and uh, I, I knew that I had to pick this one. Um, so then we come to this one, which is like a complete three hundred and sixty, which is full color, has a lot going on, but also has a very deep mood to it um, that. Again, there's there's that which caught my interest. There's this that mood. Um, so if you can please share some something about this. So this is my latest work that I started working on in 2018, um, and it's called Heart Sanas, which is the old English word for grief. And it was um, it was just after my father passed away, and so to deal with that sort of emotional hardship, I started going out on walks near his house in the area. Um, and I just woke up one morning and there was a really foggy morning and it was just absolutely perfect. So I sort of, I think the way this image appeals to me is I love the path in the middle that sort of goes down, but it goes down to nowhere. You don't know where you're going. And that for me is a literal translation of what grief was for me at the time. So you're entering into this sort of like darkness, but you're not really sure what's at the end. But then there's also the softness around of the ferns and stuff like that. So you're kind of comforted slightly. Um, yeah, I think that was, you know, mainly what it was about. And just the, it's almost sort of like, you're not really sure what's going, what's through those woods, what's through all those trees and stuff. So you're in a bit of a, you're in a dark space, 
Um, but I, it seems like it's going to get a little bit lighter the further you go in. Right. It, the the color the colors here are absolutely beautiful. Um, it's got this nice, cool to warm you know transition um, from top to bottom, and it's just over from the entire thing. It just has that has that beautiful mood going on um, that uh, I think a lot of people can see exactly what you're talking about yeah. with grief yep. in this. It's it yeah. just it comes through. Um, oh, okay. Awesome. So the last photo I picked was this gentleman um, surrounded by records and going back to black and white again makes all everything in this photo stand out um, so so well and you know what this guy's all about you you get a gist for his story because he's surrounded by you know um, old record players and records and um, I'm assuming there's there's tools and stuff all around there. Uh, he's got this giant water bottle on the ground. <laughs> it's just like some, some really interesting stuff going on here. Um, so that's what caught my attention. Uh, so if you can share a little bit about this. So this was um, from Istanbul in Turkey. They've got um, a place called the Grand Bazaar, which I think has got like about 4,000 stalls in a covered bazaar. It's chaotic. It's absolutely nuts. And I actually hired a guide for the day. I tend to do that if I'm traveling to a new place because I know that they're going to take me somewhere that I'm not going to be able to find on my own. Right. And absolutely, I would not have found this man on my own. He was, you know, like 20 minutes walk into the Grand Bazaar and you had to go back down various alleys and stuff like that. And um, he was quite shy, actually, when we first went in. It helps, obviously, that I went in with a Turkish guy, so he was chatting to him for a bit. But he, he definitely wasn't, at the start, very comfortable being photographed. So we stayed and chatted a while for you know with him and stuff. And then he did relax and he I asked the permission, which I, for me is always really important. I don't want to take someone's photo without them feeling comfortable. Um, and he just, I just let him sit there for a bit. And this, although it looks like quite a posed image, it was not posed. He was just sort of pondering. I have no idea what he was, well, he was probably thinking, I wish you'd go. <laughs> <laughs> But it just, it was just, again, it's that being at the right time, right place, right time. And he was just sort of like sitting there. He obviously, it was almost like, I guess I wasn't really there anymore. We'd, we'd spent enough time talking to him and just looking around and stuff that he felt very comfortable. So I could take an image without him being really self-conscious. And uh, it's one of my, I, I'm not a portrait photographer at all, but it is one of my favorite people images that I've ever taken. It's it's definitely uh, while it does look posed, um, it's it it definitely goes to show that when a person is relaxed and comfortable, um, you don't have to pose them. They're just gonna they're gonna naturally get into some into a position that is comfortable for them, which then makes them look great on camera. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So. Um, yeah, so this is a fantastic uh, five pieces of from your portfolio, um, each of which is fairly, fairly different from each other, um, as, uh, as I mentioned earlier in this show. So I only have one more question for you. Laura, do you have any questions for Sandra? And you know you what? I, I thought about it, and I've known, I've known Sandra for a few years now, and, and her and I are very, very similar in a lot of ways. So I didn't come up with anything like new. And although now that I say that, it was... Um, I was wondering how you come up with your like ideas. I know some of like your grief series, like that makes sense how you come up with those, but like your, your architecture ones, the, the, the plane building with the, the, you know, plain sky, what, what made you start doing that? Or how did you start shooting those? That came out from actually being on a course when we were in the Arcanum. Oh. Um, and I, I used to only take photos when I traveled. So I would, you know, for two months of the year, I'd be lucky enough to go off, you know, on various trips and stuff. And I'd take photo, lots of photos. And then I'd come back and the camera would remain in the cupboard. Right. And the, my mentor at the time said, I'm going to set you a challenge. Go out in London and photograph. I mean, I live in an amazing city. But yes. it, <laughs> you know, it didn't really appeal to me. I think when you look, you don't really look in your own backyard often. Yeah. A lot of times, yeah. yeah. And it, it, he challenged me and I thought, oh, okay, I'll go. And I have to say, I went out for about two weeks and I saw nothing and I just thought, this is pointless. I can't see anything that sort of grabs me. And then one bizarre moment, I just happened to look up 
Like a lot of the time when we're running around, especially our own cities, you don't look up. You're right. either down or you're focused on where you're going or your mind's busy. And, you know, and I just started looking up and I just started seeing these buildings and thought, oh, my God, they're amazing. And then I became obsessed with them. <laughs> Even dr driving around, like half the time you think, probably shouldn't be driving because, oh, look, there's another building. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and that's that's where it came from. And it's ended up being a, a five-year project. I mean, it started in London and then it went to Berlin and I've been to Warsaw and Gdansk and Rotterdam and Dresden. You know, it's really, it's a, it's a series that will just go on and on. I think right. it's just going to be never ending. I, you know, when we can travel freely again and safely again, Paris right. is on the list, Tel Aviv, although I'm not quite sure how I'll get there. If I grab, you know, <laughs> you know there's, there's, just, there's so much architecture fodder out there. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Very cool. Um, so the last question I have for you is if you can share one tip for photographers about either equipment that you use or a technique that you use in your photography. Okay, so I probably go technique because equipment wise, like I'd said before, I'm not really that au fait with equipment. Um, and I'm not sure if you would call this a technique, but one thing that I've learned over time is when I shoot my images, I come back and I put them, I load them on my computer and back them up, obviously. And then I don't look at them for about a week or two. I leave mm -hmm. them, I leave them because I feel that when you're, on a scene and you're taking an image, you have a certain emotional connection to it. And then when you come back and look at a, three, a 2D version on the computer, that it's just never the same. And so there's a real disappointment in it because you're still too close to the time that you took the photo. So um, I leave it for about two weeks. I don't look at them and then I come back and I can come back with fresh eyes. And then I think you also tend to notice things that you may not have noticed when you were taking as well. I'm not sure if that is a technique. Yeah, I think yeah. that's really interesting because yeah, yeah. I. I I'm guessing that not very many people actually do it that way. Right. No, I leave, didn't leave their images. You know, yeah. most people are like, "Ooh, let's get these uploaded and share." You know. Yeah, I I actually do the, um, I do the same thing for photos for myself. I do not do that for photos for clients. <laughs> right. <laughs> but 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 I I completely agree. If you you put it out of mind, out of sight, you come back, and it's it's like you're seeing it again for the first time and now you're like, okay, well, what can I do to get it to where I want it to be? Whether it's a lot of post-processing, whether it's a little bit, um, either way. So, um, anything else you want to share, Sandra or Lori, before we sign off? I was just going to share Sandra's website is sandrajordanphotography.co.uk so people can go check it out because her work is really amazing. I mean, the site yeah. title is visual meditations, which is what almost every single image I've ever seen of yours is, you know, they're all very calming and there's, there's just such purpose to what your images are and do and how you do it. It, it, it it's inspiring to me. And I know, like I said, we're a lot alike in a lot of ways, but you, this part, I haven't grasped like the being quite that deliberate about things or focused. I have a, you know, my issue is focusing on a project or a series or, you know, and you're, you're like, you're a master at what you do. It's, it's beautiful. Thank you. That's lovely to hear. <laughs> you're going to make her blush. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, and I'm coming over there to have some tea and wine with you oh, soon. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> if we can next, hopefully next year. That'd be lovely. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Um, thank you, Sandra, so much for joining us and for sharing, um, you know, your thoughts and, and your work with us and the photo focus community. Um, uh, we really appreciate you uh, taking the time. Yeah. Our thanks pleasure. a lot. Yeah. It's been lovely.